the southern end of the world, Patagonia. Despite not having a specific main attraction, the Peninsula Valdes delights with its archaic, unspoilt countryside and with a rich animal and plant life. It does not attract attention and probably looks like a stone when seen from a distance. But close up, this turns out to be a fat elephant seal in a comfortable sand bed. The Magellan penguins are said to spend their life with just one partner only. And what turns out to be even more amazing is that every year they return back to the same nest to raise their future descendants. Visitors to Patagonia inevitably meet with sheep. Besides Valentina, the domestic breed of sheep, altogether about 1,200 animals live on this 3,000 hectare farm. What attracts the attention of many different and curious onlookers and looks nearly like a mistreatment of the animals is for the sheep pure routine. Before sheep shearing, the shears are ground on antiquated looking machines to prevent damaging the animal's skin. A good Patagonian shearer manages to completely shear a sheep in three minutes. There are even some workers who manage in less than two minutes to free the animals of their wool. This is one Patagonian sheep farmer. The sheep in Patagonia are shorn once a year. In keeping with tradition, it usually happens in August and September, and it is finished by the middle of October. Then the shearers move further southwards into the colder areas of Patagonia. A sheep provides wool over the period of a six to seven years. This is white gold, as the Patagonians say, namely around five kilograms per sheep. Having reached the western part of the land, we traverse the Andes to the border with the neighbouring country of Chile. Being here, one is close by the highest place in the whole western hemisphere, the Aconcagua. On the way there, an Inca bridge is located, the Puente del Inca. This is a special attraction of Argentina, since it is not an architectural monument, but a natural work of art. The erosions and the deposits of sulphurous sources have drawn a 20 meter by 28 meter wide arch. A hotel that used to be next to the bridge went to ruin totally. In the hot jumping springs, one can once again feel the impressions of the journey through Argentina flowing. A popular destination for mountain climbers and mountain bikers is the Aconcagua Park that provides a permanent challenge thanks to a special set of circumstances. The Argentinian provinces Salta and Joyjoy lie between the 20th and 25th degrees of southern latitude. This ought to provide a subtropical climate. However, this only occurs in the eastern part of the Salta province. In the western part, lofty peaks of up to 5,000 meters determine the climate, but the path there is only partially complicated. The mountains show only cold rock faces, but the landscape is not at all boring. There is no lack of water here. The valley floor offers many suitable places for agriculture and cattle breeding. Stones of magnificent colors dominated by ochre gleam everywhere. In the middle of this vast landscape, one comes across small villages again and again, where the time passes in a slightly different way one can feel the sensation of being shifted into the past. When following the path in the direction of Purmamarca, 
one comes past Salinas Grandes, the huge Argentinian salt lake. Slightly off the beaten track, there is Permamarca, a charming Indio village. It is no more than a group of houses and a pleasant old church made of loam. The local people are not yet marked by the invasion of tourism, and the souvenir trade is still in children's shoes only. Quero de los Siete Colores, the Mountain of Seven Colours, rises behind the small village. On the way to Humahuaca, one comes across Tilcara village. The so-called Pucará, a citadel, is a building that cannot be compared to the Peruvian Machu at all, though it was built in the same style. The terraced stony dwelling that was excavated and restored looks like a series of narrow streets. Besides the Indian citadel, there are several museums in Tilcara, where the curious visitor can follow the traces of the Omaguaca Indians, the original inhabitants of this area. It is worth visiting. At a Kamenio, a female mummy in a sitting position, her headgear, the alpaca hat, and her thick black hair, as well as the abundance of archaeological excavations, indicate an exciting cultural past. Finally, we reach Humamuaca, that lies at a height of nearly 3,000 meters. This picturesque village, with about 15,000 inhabitants, founded in 1594, is prepared for the arrival of tourists. Narrow surface streets are very typical of this place. As in any other place of this ilk, one can find hawkers, who offer carvings, hand-woven carpets, and a variety of herbs. Up to the end of the 19th century, Humahuaca was considered to be an important trade center of the so-called Alto Peru. The inhabitants are very hospitable and they invite the visitors to drink mate tea with them. Argentina is distinguished by pristine nature, the beautiful mountain ranges of the Andes, a fascinating history, and finally by the very lively but quiet inhabitants themselves. Social differences make it what it is, a land full of sense and pride.